Hey, what's up, Jerry lovers? Today, what we're going to do is we are going to look into a quantity comparison question. And this one was requested. So here we go. Town A and Town B has some area that is common to both of the towns. So already I'm able to imagine and visualize two areas which have a common intersection and overlap, etc., etc. Such that the area of town A that lies in town B is 20% of the area of B that is not inside A. Okay, so there is a lot of information. And I think it would be best if I start by drawing a diagram. Okay, so I have one circle here. Let's call it A. Then I'm going to come up with one more circle over here. Since there is an overlap, let's call it B. Okay, so far so good. Now it says such that and the area of town A that lies in town B is 20% of the area of B that is not inside A. Okay, so I think before I try to explain this context, in a form of algebraic equation, first of all, I need to give values to these areas because you see this not inside A, a common in area. So I really need some type of variables over here. So I'm gonna start with, okay, let's say this P, let's call this the common intersection Q, let's call this R. So what is P? P is basically a part of A which is not shared with B. And I, ca I can call it A to be P plus Q. What is R? R is the part of B which is not shared by A. And I'm, I can call it B to be Q plus R. And what is Q? Q is common between A and B both. So now that I have some variables, now I think that I'm in a better position to actually start transferring this tax into simple algebraic equation. So here we go, such that the area of town A that lies in town B, what is the area of town A that lies in town B? Well, yeah, it is Q, right? So I can write Q is, you see this is, I'm gonna call this equal to, then I see 20%, okay, I'm gonna write 20 over 100. Then I'm gonna be of the area of B that is not inside A. Well, what is the area of B which is not inside A? Well, yeah, it's R, right? So I'm gonna write R. So now I can do some simplification since Q 20 times, uh, 20 times one is 20 and 20 times five is 100. I can simplify that. And I can simplify it in even further by saying, you know what, five times Q is equal to R right? Now that we are done with the initial simplification and visualization, now I think I have much more confidence to move towards understanding what is A and what understanding what is B. So A says the percent of town A that lies in town B. Okay, so before I try to decipher this into an algebraic expression, first thing that we need to know is, you know what, percentages are just like fractions, okay? They're just like fraction. But the only difference is the ground value, the reference, or the total is 100. Now you must be asking, hey, ABD, but why do we need 100 if we have fractions? That why don't we only depend on fractions? Why do we even need 100 as a ground reference or as a total? Well, the answer is quite obvious, honestly. Humans love playing with or using system of tens. Why? Because it is easy to use, okay? So why? Because let's come up with an example. So if I s want to multiply something with 100, all I have to do is count the number of zeros and add to the value, right? Super easy to use. Uh, if I want to divide something with 100, all I have to do is count, uh, or 100, 10, 1000, anything. All I have to do is count the number of zeros and simply remove move the decimal to the left, right? So working with system of tens is a lot easier, that's why. 
So whenever we are saying, for example, let's just use this 20% just because it's in the question. If I'm saying, okay, 20%, I'm just saying 20%. What does this mean? 20 is a part and 100 is the total, is the ground reference value, right? So using this analogy right here and analysis, I can say, okay, the percent. When you're saying percent, like over here I said 20%, you're talking about the part, okay? The part. And whenever you hear off town A, off something, off is basically the total right here. So it says the part of town A that is that lies in town B. So what is the part of A that lies in town B? Well, it is Q, right? Q. So since I am dealing with percentage, I have to consider Q over A in a case which A must be a hundred value. And now that we are done with our initial analysis, all I have to do is try to come up with the answer D, which is the process of contradiction. So, can I come up with a percentage, a value of Q, which is greater than 18% or less than 80%? So, let's try to go for a greater value. And let's use a simple value. Let's say Q is 20, 20% 20 with a reference value of 100. And what's that's going to be? 1 over 5, simplified. So Q is 1 in its simplified form. I can just simply, using the same uh, graphical representation, using the simple Venn diagram, I'm saying, okay, I'm going to place 1 over here, which is Q. And since A is P plus Q, and A value is given over here, which is 5, now the question is what I can place in, what I can basically insert in the place of P. Well, obviously, it's going to be 4, right? Because 4 plus 1, these two need to add up to give a 5, right? Let me use a different marker, yeah. And then I'm like, okay, since I have Q, and according to this relationship, one is Q, what can be R? Well, one times one, five times one is five, so R is gonna be five. And since B is the combination of these two values, it's gonna be six. So using this simple analysis, I, I have proved that 20% that the value of Q can be greater than 18%. But now the question is, can I come up with another case in which it is less? Well, yeah, let's go for it. Let's try 15, okay, let's try 15. And if I simplify that using a five, well, five threes are 15 and five twenty is our hundred, right? So what I'm gonna do is simply place three in the middle, which is Q, since A is 20, I'm going to be like, okay, 20. Since I need a value that adds up with 3 to give 20, I'm going to be like, okay, 17 plus 3 is 20. Then uh, using simple un uh, this relationship right here, I'm going to be like, okay, if I place 3 here, 5 times 3 is 15, so R is 15. And these two combine to give 18. So B is going to be 18. So again, I have proved that there is a possibility in which 15%, the value of Q, is going to be less than 18%. So through the process of contradiction, D must be the answer. And this question can also be done using intuition, but this method is something that I don't really recommend to a lot of people because intuition comes with GRE experience. And what do I mean by that? Well. I am, I have only given this one condition, okay, this one constraint. Uh, I don't know the value of Q, which is, by the way, dependent on R, and R is basically dependent on B, and I'm, I've asked about Q over A, right? I have no information about A, I have no information about B, so how can I even come up with a concrete relationship just with this just one constraint, this one given rule? So this is something that I don't really recommend, but anyway, the answer is D.